Good morning to you. Welcome to Good Morning Australia. Great to have your company and wonderful to have the company. God, I've loved you as a blonde, a brunette, a redhead, and now you're a blackhead. I know, Not I a can't blackhead. stop. <laughs> Whatever you call that colour. I am a blackhead. You look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. That colour is very familiar. You haven't been in my dressing room, have you? <laughs> About the microphone is doing a one person... You, gosh, didn't you get fantastic reviews? I, I just can't believe my luck. I mean, they just adored it. Wow, we Sydney. adore you too. It's oh, just wonderful to see you, you again. It's, it's great to be back in Melbourne. And yeah. I'm Thanks coming for coming. Here. We're out of time now. <laughs> 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 GMA. Good morning, Amanda. Now, the play, the one the person play, the one woman play in question is Full Gallop, which opened all that recently at... Uh, a week at, ago yesterday, yeah. a week ago Wednesday. That's but, right. Uh, uh, at uh, the Marion Theatre. Yes. And the reviews are raised, I aren't know, they? I know, I know. I'm, I'm very, very thrilled because I haven't been in Sydney for a long time doing straight drama. I did HMS Pinafore last year, but I was, you know, one of a thousand. Mm -hmm. And um, it was wonderful for me to be seen in a serious light again. Now, that's the reason for the black hair, isn't it? Oh, yes, I'm for, very yeah. serious. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're playing uh, a very famous lady. Diana Vreeland, yes. who was the editor of Vogue and Harper's Bazaar during the 60s. Oh, look at her. Yeah, look <laughs> at her there. amazing? Yes. Where did you get that A little that bit of magic beauty wouldn't go astray, would it? <laughs> Actually, she has a wonderful speech where she talks about how ugly she felt mm -hmm. as a child growing up and how her mother said to her one day, oh, it's too bad you have such a beautiful sister and that you are so extremely ugly and therefore so terribly jealous oh. of her. I, it's just terrible what the mother... And that did. happens in the play, doesn't it? Yes, yes. There's a huge speech about how ugly she feels, but she's ugly but chic. Yeah. Can I ask you, um, do you not get along with fellow actors or do you just prefer doing a one-person show? I mean, you do them all the time, I, don't look, you? Look, I don't know why it's happening to me, but I think, I think on the, the back of Shirley Valentine, which, you know, let's not talk about that anymore, but when people know that you are able and you have the confidence to do a one-woman show for there that long... Shirley Valentine, by the way. Oh, hello, Shirley. Shirley, the girl. Do you want to put her away, do you? Well, I don't think you should ever put anything away, especially something that you've done for that long and which is so beautiful. You'd like to. Yes, I think I, unless I'm asked to do it again, I've given away the rights. Um, I would never seek her out again. Mm. But um, she's such a wonderful role to play. Totally different, I would imagine, to Diana. Diana Freeland, yeah. I'm terribly chic and full of makeup. It's very white makeup, very red makeup, and she used to rouge her ears, mm. um, which was quite strange. And she was a, a leader of fashion in those days. That nobody made a move unless, you know, she said. So, so. what was her time span? Well, she was born in the Belle Epoque era, so she she was born very um, late. 1800s, yeah. and then went through the the 20s or the Victorian, she must have lived to a Edwardian. Age, did she? 89, she died. Right. 1989, she died, and she was nearly 90. Mm. Um, and oh no, that she couldn't have been born then. Yes. When I said it. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes, of that's course right. She, yeah. yes. she would have been. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But yes. she saw. How old Edwardian was she when she died? Victor 89. And she and died in 1989. Yes. That would have made her born in 1900. Yes. Yeah. That would be right. Um, it's, it's, it's very odd because there's no, there's not a lot of evidence about her birth and her education and some people think that she was Jewish but there's no evidence of that. But Did she marry? Did way, she have relationships? Oh, yes, she married the most beautiful man called Reed Vreeland who, uh, and succeeded in the world of beauty mm. and, and yet she was so incredibly ugly. Now, when you finish uh, this play on the 20th mm. of September at the Marion Theatre at the moment, as I say, magnificent rave reviews for Amanda, and I'm sure deservedly so, you then go to Queensland? I'm going back to Queensland to do um, a three-hander play with the divine Robert Colby and the, the, the superb John Stanton, who I adore. A bit of and beauty on stage there. Actually, with two other actors on stage, it'll be like you're having a chorus. Uh, it'll be such fun, you know, just to have someone to say hello to when you get to work and see them in the interval. Have you worked with those blokes before? I have. I've worked with Robert in a wonderful farce, which I don't know why it didn't ever come here or Sydney, called Don't Dress for Dinner. I oh, John Stanton in uh, Nicholas Nickleby. N yes, yeah. absolutely. Fancy you remembering that. <laughs> I know most things, Mary. Yes, and uh, that's I beg the... <laughs> That's okay. the last time I was with John Stanton. Yeah. So you're looking forward to that? Very much so. It's a thriller. There's going to be guns and broken glass and That's much just tension. in the dressing room, folks. <laughs> a lot of tension and thrill. When you leave stage, when you're doing a one-person show, as you are at the moment, mm. and, I mean, there wouldn't be a lot of technicians backstage, I would have there's, imagined. Uh, there's two. There's my stage manager, and a uh, Coralie Venus, and Adrian, my sound guy, and I very rarely see them. So what do you do? Do you I, just go back to your dressing room? I order a big gin and tonic. Yes. That's always in my dressing room when I come off. And just sit there? 
And I sit there, and I have to, you can see the makeup I've got on, it's, it's, and the wig, it's huge, you know, to get all that off. And I sit there, and then eventually they come down and chat to me whilst I'm getting it all off, and not the clothes, the makeup and the hair, right. and then I go home. Of course, you got your gear off, didn't you? For oh, don't, us in don't that go instant. there, Bert. Well, I think it's always interesting when you have a, an actor of your quality and all of a sudden, you know, a, 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 someone sitting in the theatre like me <laughs> sees you in steaming and, the, I mean, there's everything there, the thing, the whole jazz. Yes. And it wasn't quite as I expected, as I told you before, I mean, because you... Well, the, no, what I mean by that? <laughs> the performance... I'm sorry. <laughs> the performance was, was so great that, yeah. I mean, the, the nudity becomes secondary. It does. And I'm sure that's what you aim for, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I don't take my clothes off for anything. You know, you only do it if it's absolutely necessary, but people never let you forget that you've taken your clothes off. Yes. I, I did it in Shirley Valentine too, but it was very necessary. It must be dreadful, actually, people reminding you about that all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry about no. that. No. Uh, with you, I don't care what you do, because okay. I love you so much. Get your much. gear off. Get your <laughs> gear off. Da, da, da. Hello, 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 hello. I've got to say to you, uh, just finally, I mean, when you look at the, the sort of work that you've done here in Australia, when you came to Australia all those years ago, mm. you wouldn't have believed that all of this was ahead of no. you? No, never. And I, I have no desire to go back to England, and I never have. You know, I've become an Australian citizen. I adore it here. I just... A flying Australian citizen. Yes, I've got I'm your still license flying. And everything. Yes, still flying Cessnas. And... Do you enjoy that? Oh, yes. I'm an air sign. I'm a Libram, so I'm in my element when I'm flying. And... Do you fly by yourself? I haven't yet. I'm, I, I've only got it this year, so I've still got... I just need someone with me. But I will. I, obviously, I've gone solo. You have to go solo to get um, your license, but uh, I haven't gone on a big trip on my own yet. I'd be scared I'd get lost. Well, congratulations, <laughs> as I say, on what must be just a, a magnificent performance again by yourself. That goes until the 20th of September, then you're yes. up to Queensland with, uh, with Robert and John. And, and then, then you said back here. Back to Melbourne. To and do Masterclass. Love, oh, well, Maria Callas at your beautiful playhouse is that a one person January. performance no again? thank goodness it's with wonderful opera singers and a wonderful pianist what's it like playing her oh magic magic it's much more um emotional than the play i'm doing at the moment she's very much on a roller coaster the old shipwreck thing if you had three islands and uh, dana freeland was on mm. one and shirley valentine was on the other and maria callas was on mm. the other what would you do I'd want to be Shirley Valentine, I think, because I think she's the most hopeful of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and she's never-ending. She's very motivational. She uh, goes on and says, keep taking risks in your life. Never live a little life. Just like you do. You never live a little life. No. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Great to see you, my friend. Amanda Margaret from Full Gallop, Marion Street Theatre, now.